Sheffield 57, the sponsor of this webcast, invites you to visit our re condominium residences. Good day, I'm Adrian Lavalley, and this is The Real Deal. A record-breaking number of city permits for residential construction are expected to be issued by year's end. An NYU study shows that race and geography are crucial in how banks have provided subprime loans in the city, and Manhattan rents rise in the third quarter. That and more on The Real Deal webcast this week. But first, some highlights from this week's interview. We've been hearing a lot every day about how the lack of credit may soon affect the commercial market. But will the credit crunch really have any impact on the city's robust office leases, investment property sales, and retail rents? Jen Benepe spoke to Francis Greenberger, the CEO and chairman of Time Equities, to find out. What do you see for the commercial market over the next year? The market is taking a little bit of a pause right now, mm -hmm. which when you think about the financial services industry, which is clearly going through some sort of a realignment and trying to figure out who the winners and losers are going to be as a result of the subprime and related issues. Can you name some areas of the city that you think will resist a downturn in the market? Areas like the Lower East Side, the Bowery right now, it's absolutely astonishing what's going on there. For the full interview, click on the link below. And now for the news. New York City is expected to issue a record number of building permits this year, with 34,000 residential units expected to be built. That would break the previous record of 33,084 set in 1972. Permits were up this year through August in Queens and Brooklyn, but dropped in Manhattan, Staten Island, and the Bronx. Still, Manhattan gathered steam in the third quarter, posting the most new permits for a quarter since 2001. The 421A property tax exemption program that requires building foundations to be in place by June 30th may be one of the reasons for the uptick. An NYU Furman Center study found home buyers in predominantly black and Hispanic neighborhoods last year were more likely to get subprime mortgages than buyers with the same income in white neighborhoods. Some of the findings include 46% of loans were subprime in the majority black neighborhood of Jamaica, Queens. The majority white neighborhood of Bay Ridge, Brooklyn had one of the lowest rates at 3.6%. A third quarter Manhattan rental market report by brokerage City Habitats shows an increase in average rents on all unit sizes. Average monthly rents for studio apartments jumped 4.8% to over $1,900 compared to last year. The average price for a two bedroom increased 5.6% to about $3,700. Strong job growth and the conversion of big rental buildings to condos helped. The city has submitted a proposal for a rezoning of 125th Street that could transform the historic Harlem Corridor into a dense hub for retail and the arts. The plan calls for 2,300 new apartments and more than 600,000 square feet of additional retail space. It would double the allowable building density to 29 stories. The project would stretch from Frederick Douglass Boulevard to 2nd Avenue and 124th to 125th Streets. Merrill Lynch is reportedly leaning toward relocating to an office tower that would be built at the site of Vornado Realty's Hotel Pennsylvania. It would rise across 7th Avenue from Penn Station. The company's executives are also in talks with state officials. They could offer tens of millions of dollars in incentives for a 2.4 million square foot headquarters at the World Trade Center. A city council bill introduced by Speaker Christine Quinn would for the first time give tenants the right to sue landlords for harassment. Charges could include lack of heat and hot water, pressure to accept a buyout, or frivolous litigation. Fines could reach $5,000. A provision limits the number of times a tenant can unsuccessfully sue a landlord. Midtown Equities founder and Sears Tower co-owner Joseph Kyra sold his Bedford Avenue home in Brooklyn for $10 million. The sale of his house at 3542 Bedford Avenue was Brooklyn's second highest ever. The Kyra family is among the world's richest, according to Forbes magazine, and with his extended family, owns more than 100 Manhattan properties. The more than 7,500 square foot house built in 1920 is in Gravesend, where a growing community of Syrian Jews owns elite homes. Five of the nine most expensive homes ever sold in Brooklyn are located there. 
Democratic fundraiser Connie Milstein, who supported Gore in the 2000 election and was allegedly caught on camera trying to bribe votes from homeless people using cigarettes, just made over $4 million selling her duplex to the opposition. She sold her 5,000 square foot 15 room duplex at 770 Park Avenue for $20 million to Robert and Kate Niehaus, who contributed to President Bush's last campaign. Milstein originally bought the 16th and 17th floor residence in 2005 for $15.7 million. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Real Deal webcast. Remember to click on the link below for this week's interview. Please join us every week for the latest in real estate news. I'm Adrienne Lavallee, and this is The Real Deal.